RPF. This is Star Wars Chick. I'm at San Diego Comic Con 2013. I'm in the prop store of London booth with Stephen Lane. And Stephen's going to tell us about some of the amazing props that they've brought here this year. Now, Stephen, you guys have taken a little bit of a different approach this year to the props that you've brought to the convention. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Well, each year we sort of focus on a lot of the vintage material. And uh, this year we thought we'd bring some more sort of contemporary and, and relevant material out to the show. To, uh, for some of the younger generation who perhaps won't be more familiar with things like the John Hurt Alien Space Suit, which we bought last year. The guys love that, you know, people went crazy for it. Yeah. Uh, but there were a lot of people who were walking past the booth who might not have seen Alien. And so this year we thought, well, Dread was a big deal for us earlier this year. The fans love seeing us sell the stuff online. The auction was a great success. Let's bring a little flavor of that out to the show. Stephen, let's talk about the dread pieces that you've got here. Yeah, sure. Well, I think the, the main piece that we bought out is this uh, the main dread costume itself, which is a mix of Carl Urban and stunt components. Beautiful setup. Uh, it's all put together by a, a designer called Robert Allsop, who did a fantastic job with uh, the film. It's a real passion project for him. And uh, he specializes in sort of uh, costume prop design, if you like. So any sort of specialty costumes. And uh, he's always been a big fan of Dread, and he just knocked it out of the park with it. So I, I love the way it came together. I love the way it looked on the screen. And we thought, yeah, let's bring it out and show some of the fans you know, what it looks like in person. It's really imposing and it's, it's really a beautiful piece. I mean, it looks everything looks very well made on it as well, which a lot of screen used kind of costumes and things like that really aren't well made. You know, they're just meant to be, you know, a short term, look great on film and, and that's it. But the leather work on here is just incredible and all the different details, the different parts and pieces and the different textures yeah. that are on the suit are really just yeah. beautiful. There's a huge number of components that have gone in pulling it all together. And it, yeah, as I say, I think he just did a brilliant job of it. I love the way aesthetically it finished up. I think it's truly reminiscent of the, you know, the, the comic book, the emphasis of the, the presence of the character, I think is just, yeah, yeah, and I love the film as well. I thought yeah, it was a great film. Absolutely, I did too. And you guys had a huge auction, um, had yeah. incredible pieces yeah, the there fans, as well. Fans loved yeah. It. I mean, we, we auctioned somewhere in the region of about 250 pieces. Everything went uh, at, at you know, just huge levels of interest across the board. I think we had something like over 5,100 bids. You know, the, the, we had a few. <laughs> Yeah, great. We idea. didn't get anything, but we had bits in there. Uh, just a massive amount of traffic went through it. I think we had over 150,000 unique visits to the auction during the wow. course of the auction. Which 2000 and AD got involved, Glider, Anti Cool News, these guys all picked up on it. It was a great success. The fans loved it, and we love yeah. being giving the fans access to this material as well. It's really cool. So let's talk about, you've got a couple of Dread helmets here as well. Tell me a little bit about each of those. Yeah, sure. Well, we've actually bought out one of the Dread helmets that's from the original Stallone film, um, and you can see the differences, but at the same time, the sort of the resemblance in, and the sort of process and design change there. Much smaller helmet, much tighter helmet. Um, then we bought out one of the, the Judge helmets, which is a prototype Judge helmet, and then one of the Judge Guard helmets as well. All great looking pieces, you know, again, i just a big fan of the way that this film looks. So let's talk about this piece. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll go back to the, the, the movies that maybe some of you guys haven't seen out there, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> some of the kids. <laughs> yeah, this, this piece is something that we were so excited to find, really. I mean, it's one of those sort of grail pieces for a lot of people that, that people don't really didn't even know still existed. You know, this is what's most exciting about this, is the fact that when it turned up, we just like, hey, wow, there's an Aliens Tracker, an original Aliens Tracker. It has the components, still got its original carry strap. But on top of that, this is the fact that this is actually the, the effects unit as well. That, that's really what added to it uh, as much as anything else. Um, so do you want me to talk you through what, what we got going on here? Yeah, absolutely. It, it looks a bit weird and wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Basically what they had to do for the film was obviously create a graphic screen on the tracker. And with technology during that era, that's just not something that was physically possible to encase in a small unit like this. So what they basically did was deconstruct uh, a TV set, like a little portable kitchen mm -hmm. TV set, uh, take the tube out, extend that all the wires. Right that's it. Yeah, just move that over. Extend all the wires and still retain the connection up to the tube. Insert the tube up into the back of the unit itself, and you, you can actually see here the way that it actually extends out because it just wouldn't fit into the housing. So what that meant was that this was predominantly used for really tight shots, really close-up shots where they wanted to get the graphics on screen, maybe a hand mm -hmm. on, the, on the unit at the same time. 
So when we looked at this, we were like, okay, so how are we going to display this properly? Because that's a big part of what we do. It's about you know not just acquiring Absolutely. and selling. It's about preservation. It's about you know getting it out there for people to see. How do we do that yeah. best? So when we bought this, the guy still had the original Umatic tape that the graphics were stringed from. So he had this thing, it's old technology now, so we got that converted to digitally. We got it chipped so that we could then use that and actually drop in a little LED screen here, which we can feed the, the graphics through. So rather than have it into here and try and fit something into here that wasn't there, keep this all original, keep the tube in there, and then stream the original graphics here. And so this is actually the original graphics that are off the close-up hero tracker, which you know to us was just awesome. Having the tracker is one thing, having the, the, the original graphics yeah. as well was something something completely different. And uh, what we love about this is that a lot of the uh, the graphics were actually registered as well. So we say like the phone spins 90 degrees to the left, so they knew which shot they were going to be using it for as well, wow. which is which is just so cool. But it's it's a real. It's just one of those hero pieces, man. I know, just I'm just like, piece, you know? this is awesome. <laughs> and it's from a great era of, of prop making as well. I know, it. Know? This period of time, you look at props from this period of time, and you're just like, and They yeah, just look okay, real, exactly yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> it, it's funny because there was less definition in what you were looking at during this era, but they had more detail on it. When you look at the props and costumes now, yeah. okay, generally speaking, everything's really streamlined, but you're looking at it in HD, but you're not getting any of the detail. It's a really weird flip from where it was before. But uh, yeah, I love this piece. I think it's just really cool, and it's, it's the epitome of what we strive to, to, to track down. Usually you guys have something from Indiana Jones, and, and this here obviously is uh, no exception. So let's talk about the whip. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited to bring this this, uh, this whip out on display. It's a, a piece that we picked up a little while ago from Vic Armstrong. Uh, it's uh, one of Harrison's Ford, Har Harrison Ford's whips. Uh, most likely Temple of Doom or Last Crusade. It's, it's the wrong construction to be from Raiders of the Lost Ark. But the amount of people have come up to that and just love seeing that as well. You know, it's it's one of those pieces that instantly people click with as well. Yeah. Great, great item. <laughs> well, Stephen, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, pleasure as always. Great seeing you guys here. All right.